Hello, my name is Dr. Simon Fry, a consultant in clinical neurophysiology, back with the channel. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about orthostatic tremor, which is also known as shaky leg syndrome. This is quite a rare condition, which often leads to delays in making the diagnosis, uh, approximately seven years on average. And the key features are unsteadiness, particularly on standing, which can lead to falls, which is relieved by sitting or lying down and may be reduced when walking. It's quite a fast tremor of between 13 and 18 uh, cycles per second, usually affecting the legs, more than the trunk and occasionally into the arms as well. The speed of the tremor can actually make it quite hard to identify clinically because it's such a fine and fast tremor. However, it may be audible listening to it with a stethoscope on top of the muscles. Now in clinical neurophysiology, we're quite fortunate in that we can do EMG and surface EMG tests very easily. In this example, the patient's lying down to begin with and then they're asked to stand up. Immediately, start to hear the helicopter-like sound of the rotor blades. And as the signal settles down, we'll just pause it round about there. And let's count the number of cycles per second. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 times per second. We can also have a listen as well um, to the arm muscle as well. Let's play this one too. Now this one is um, a much smaller um, amplitude and therefore it's much harder to identify um, visually on the screen. But if you have a listen, it's the same frequency as in the leg. In terms of the demographics, incidence and prevalence are uncertain, uh, but it's a rare um, problem. It tends to affect women more than men. The typical age is around about 55 and older, um, although pediatric cases are reported too. The age of onset can vary between primary and secondary orthostatic tremors. So primary one tends to occur a little bit earlier from on average around the age of 50 and secondary ones from about the age of 60. It's usually a sporadic issue, but it can run in families and it makes us with an expanded spectrum of neurological issues which feature tremor. In terms of primary versus secondary, most cases are primary. That means it happens for its own intrinsic causes rather than secondary to some other problem. The secondary ones tend to be uh, either relating to the brain, head trauma, cerebellar dysfunction, or spinal cord dysfunction, sometimes to do with hypothyroidism, B12 deficiencies, various issues within the blood called the gammopathies, and medication side effects are the most important causes. All the secondary causes have their own distinct features, which differentiate those from the primary idiopathic ones. Where exactly is the problem in the idiopathic ones? It's actually very complex to unpick when you look through the medical literature, whether it's around the brain, the brainstem, um, cerebellum, spinal interneurons. And so it could be that there might be a variety of different issues which have to occur simultaneously um, for the orthostatic tremor to manifest itself. In terms of the disease course, it's often fairly static in the limbs which are affected, but it can be a progressive issue. And when it is progressive, they may uh, translate into increase in stability and spread of what's affected. But the frequency of the tremor stays the same. It can significantly impact daily activities and quality of life. And many patients have a concomitant postural tremor in the arms of between 5 and 10 hertz, which is a, a slower tremor. It may be linked to other movement disorders, which may manifest themselves uh, years later or develop subsequently. In terms of investigation, surface EMG to determine the tremor frequency is very valuable, but things such as an MRI brain, DAT scan and various blood tests are mainly there to rule out secondary causes and mimics. In terms of treatments, there's a pharmacological route which can be pursued. Clonazepam, gabapentin are the most effectual uh, medications that we have. However, for some patients, 
they may not be helpful and they may need some other treatments which can have variable or time limited effects. There are also neurosurgical options as well which include deep brain stimulators and spinal cord stimulators but those are reserved for those who are refractory to medications and the choice of exactly which pathway to follow will be very much with the treating team. In terms of physical aspects, there can be things to consider such as portable stools, so people can sit down, or walking aids if people are feeling unsteady, and some may even end up considering use of a wheelchair or mobility scooter um, if falls are a particular problem. I hope that's been a helpful overview of this subject. Please do support the channel by liking, sharing and subscribing. Very happy to take questions relevant to this in the comment section down below. All the very best and hope to see you soon.